Hello and welcome to this session on Philosophical Basis of Education. Philosophy is a study or creation of theories about basic things such as nature of existence, knowledge and thought or about how people should live. Philosophy of education can refer to either the academic field of applied philosophy or to one of any educational philosophies that promote a specific type or vision of education which examines the definition, goals and meanings of education. Philosophy determines whether the aim of education should be intellectual, spiritual, liberal, aesthetic, moral or vocational. The teacher must possess a sound philosophy of life. The educator must be a lover of wisdom, a seeker of knowledge and an individual of virtues and values. Only then the educator can bring about desirable changes in the pupils. As an academic field, philosophy of education is the philosophical study of education and its problems and its central subject matter is education and its methods are those of philosophy. The philosophy of education may be either the philosophy of the process of education or the philosophy of the discipline of education. That is, it may be part of the discipline in the sense of being concerned with the aims, forms, methods or results of the process of educating or being educated. Or it may be metadisciplinary in the sense of being concerned with the concepts, aims and methods of the discipline. As such, it is both part of the field of education and a field of applied philosophy, drawing from fields of metaphysics, epistemology, axiology and the speculative, prescriptive and analytic philosophical approaches to address questions in and about pedagogy, education policy and curriculum as well as the process of learning to name a few. For example, it might study what constitutes upbringing and education, the values and norms revealed through upbringing and educational practices, the limits and legitimization of education as an academic discipline and the relation between educational theory and practice. The multiple ways of conceiving education coupled with the multiple fields and approaches of philosophy make philosophy of education not only a very diverse field but also one that is not easily defined. Although there is overlap, philosophy of education should not be conflated with educational theory which is not defined specifically by the application of philosophy to questions in education. Philosophy of education also should not be confused with philosophy education, the practice of teaching and learning the subject of philosophy. Philosophy of education can also be understood not as an academic discipline but as a normative educational theory that unifies pedagogy, curriculum, learning theory and the purpose of education and is grounded in specific metaphysical, epistemological and axiological assumptions. These theories are also called educational philosophies. For example, a teacher might be said to follow a perennialist educational philosophy or to follow a perennialist philosophy education. Philosophy is a search for a general understanding of values and reality by chiefly speculative rather than observational means. It signifies a natural and necessary urge in human beings to know themselves and the world in which they live and move and have their being. Western philosophy remained more or less true to the etymological meaning of philosophy in being essentially an intellectual quest for truth. Indian philosophy is intensely spiritual and has always emphasized the need for practical realization of truth. Philosophy is a comprehensive system of ideas about human nature and the nature of the reality we live in. It is a guide for living because the issues it addresses are basic and pervasive, determining the course we take in life and how we treat other people. Hence, we can say that all the aspects of human life are influenced and governed by the philosophical consideration. As a field of study, philosophy is one of the oldest disciplines. It is considered as a mother of all the sciences. In fact, it is at the root of all knowledge. 
education has drawn its material from different philosophical bases. Education, like philosophy, is also closely related to human life. Therefore, being an important life activity, education is also greatly influenced by philosophy. Various fields of philosophy, like the political philosophy, social philosophy, and economic philosophy, have great influence on the various aspects of education, like educational procedures, processes, policies, planning, and implementation, from both the theoretical and practical aspects. In order to understand the concept of philosophy of education, it is necessary to first understand the meaning of the two terms, philosophy and education. Meaning of philosophy and education. The word philosophy literally means love of wisdom. It is derived from the two Greek words, philo, which means love, and sophia, which means wisdom. This tells us something about the nature of philosophy, but not much because many disciplines seek wisdom. Since time immemorial, there have been various pursuits for unfolding the mystery of the universe, birth and death, sorrow and joy. Various ages have produced different thoughts, throwing light upon the mystic region. The ultimate truth is yet to be found out. This eternal quest for truth lends the origin of philosophy. A love of wisdom is the essence for any philosophical investigation. On the standard way of telling the story, humanity's first systematic inquiries took place within a mythological or religious framework. Wisdom ultimately was to be derived from sacred traditions and from individual thought to possess privileged access to a supernatural realm, whose own access to wisdom, in turn, generally was not questioned. However, starting in the 6th century BC, there appeared in ancient Greece a series of thinkers whose inquiries were comparatively secular. Presumably, these thinkers conducted their inquiries through reason and observation rather than through tradition and revelation. These thinkers were the first philosophers. Although this picture is admittedly simplistic, the basic distinction has stuck. Philosophy in its most primeval form is considered nothing less than secular inquiry itself. The subject of philosophical inquiry is reality itself. There are different schools of philosophy depending on the answers they seek to the question of reality. It is a search for understanding of man, nature and the universe. There are different branches of philosophy like epistemology, metaphysics, etc. There are different fields of philosophy such as educational philosophy, social philosophy, political philosophy, economic philosophy, etc. There are also different philosophical approaches such as idealism, naturalism, pragmatism, materialism and so on. Etymologically, the word education is derived from educare, which is a Latin word meaning bring up, which is related to edicere, which means bring out, bring forth what is within, bring out potential, and ducere, which means to lead. Education in the largest sense is any act or experience that has a formative effect on the mind, character, or physical ability of an individual. In its technical sense, education is a process by which society deliberately transmits its accumulated knowledge, skills, and values from one generation to another. Webster defines education as a process of educating or teaching. Educate is further defined as to develop the knowledge, skill, or character. Thus, from these definitions, we might assume that the purpose of education is to develop the knowledge, skill, or character of students. In ancient Greece, Socrates argued that education was about drawing out what was already within the student. The sophists, a group of itinerant teachers, promised to give students the necessary knowledge and skills to gain positions with the city-state. Thus, we see that there are different views and understandings of the meaning of the term education. In the modern times, it has acquired two different shades of meanings, namely, one, an institutional instruction given to students in schools, colleges, formally, and two, a pedagogical science studied by the student of education. Education is a dynamic or practical side of philosophy. Philosophy takes into its orbit all the dimensions of human life, 
Similarly, education also reflects the multifaceted nature of human life. Therefore, education is closely related to various aspects of human life and environment. Hence, the term education has a wide connotation. It is difficult to define education by a single definition. Philosophers and thinkers from Socrates to Dewey in West and a mass of Indian philosophers have attempted to define the education. However, education can be understood as a deliberate and systematic influence exerted by a mature person through instruction and discipline. It means the harmonious development of all the powers of the human being, physical, social, intellectual, aesthetic and spiritual. The essential elements in the educative process are a creative mind, a well-integrated self, socially useful purposes and experience related to the interests of the individual, needs and abilities of the individual of a social group. In the historical development of man, education has been the right of a privileged few. It is only in recent centuries that education has come to be recognized as a human right. All have equal right to be educated as education has become prerequisite of civilization. Concept of philosophy of education. All human societies, past and present, have had a vested interest in education. And some intellect have claimed that teaching is the second oldest profession. While not all societies channel sufficient resources into support for educational activities and institutions, all at the very least acknowledge their centrality and for good reasons. For one thing, it is obvious that children are born illiterate and innumerate and ignorant of the norms and culture achievements of the community or society into which they have been thrust. But with the help of professional teachers and the dedicated amateurs in their families and immediate environs, within a few years they can read, write, calculate and act in culturally appropriate ways. Some learn these skills with more facility than others and so education also serves as a social sorting mechanism and undoubtedly has enormous impact on the economic fate of the individual. Put more abstractly, at its best, education equips individuals with the skills and substantive knowledge that allows them to define and to pursue their own goals and also allows them to participate in the life of their community as full-fledged autonomous citizens. But this is to spread matters in very individualistic terms and it is fruitful also to take a societal perspective where the picture changes somewhat. It emerges that in pluralistic societies such as the Western democracies, there are some groups that do not wholeheartedly support the development of autonomous individuals. For such folk can weaken a group from within by thinking for themselves and challenging communal norms and beliefs. From the point of view of groups whose survival is thus threatened, formal, state-provided education is not necessarily a good thing. But in other ways, even these groups depend for their continuing survival on educational processes, as do the larger societies and nation-states of which they are part. For as John Dewey put it in the opening chapter of his classical work, Democracy and Education, in 1916, in its broadest sense, education is a means of the social continuity of life. Dewey pointed out that the primary inelectable facts of the birth and death of each one of the constituent members in a social group make education a necessity, for despite this, biological inevitability of the life of the group goes on. The great social importance of education is underscored too by the fact that when a society is shaken by a crisis, this often is taken as a sign of educational breakdown education and educators become scapegoats. It is not surprising that such an important social domain has attracted the attention of philosophers for thousands of years, especially as there are complex issues aplenty that have great philosophical interest. The philosophy of education plays an important role in providing direction to education as well as providing a theory of knowledge for education to work upon. Philosophy of education is essentially a method of approaching educational experience rather than a body of conclusions. It is a specific method which makes it philosophical. 
Philosophical method is critical, comprehensive, and synthetic. Therefore, one, philosophy of education is a criticism of the general theory of education, and two, it consists of critical evaluation and systematic reflection upon general theories, and three, it is a synthesis of educational facts with educational values. In brief, it is a philosophical process of solving educational problems through philosophical method from a philosophical attitude to arrive at philosophical conclusions and results. Thus, it aims at achieving general as well as comprehensive results. New Perspectives in Philosophy of Education The chief task of philosophy is to determine what constitutes a life worth living. The chief task of education is to make life worth living. Therefore, the relationship between philosophy and education is very close. Philosophy tells the goal and the essentials of good life. Education tells the means to achieve those goals and learn those essentials of a good life. Philosophy deals with the abstract, while education deals with the concrete. All great philosophers are great educators. Fichte says, the art of education will never attain complete clearness without philosophy. James Ross remarks, education is a dynamic side of philosophy. John Dewey observes, philosophy is a theory of education in its most general phases. The scope of philosophy of education is confined to the field of education. Thus, it is philosophy in the field of education. The scope of philosophy of education is concerned with the problems of education. These problems mainly include 1. Interpretation of human nature, the world and the universe and the relation with man. 2. Interpretation of aims and ideals of education. 3. The relationship of various components of the system of education. 4. Relationship of education and various areas of national life like economic system, political order, social progress, cultural reconstructions, etc. 5 educational values, and six, theory of knowledge and its relationship to education. The above-mentioned problems constitute the scope of philosophy of education and explains its nature. The desire to seek a grounding for philosophy of education in philosophy meant that more and more scholars, including students studying for graduate degrees in the field, went into philosophy departments or the relevant aisles in libraries and bookstores and started reading work in existentialism, phenomenology and other continental philosophies. It meant that many philosophers of education read and reread primary sources in philosophy and looked increasingly outside Anglo-American philosophy to more international sources. They also turned to texts on the margins of what had been counted as philosophy before critical theory, feminism, and those who would later be termed postmodern writers. Their scholarship made substantial contributions to understanding such topics as power and inequality in education and the critique of cultural intolerance in both the tacit and the hidden curricula. In many ways, returning to the older vision of philosophy of education as necessarily implicated in issues of politics, critique, and reform, these philosophers eschewed the method of analysis, but even more profoundly rejected its vision of philosophy of education as an exercise in rational or objective reconnaissance. Jonas Saltis offered his widely accepted characterization of philosophy of education in 1971, than within a year, essays were already appearing with titles like uh, Analytic Philosophy of Education at the Crossroads that came out in 1972. Criticisms of analytic philosophy, some though not all from critical theory or feminist points of view, gained wider credibility during the decade. These criticisms included chiefly the question of whose concepts were being taken for granted. The criticism that the methods of analysis ostensibly neutral and objective, in fact imported substantive value commitments. The argument that the view of language undergirding this method was culturally bounded and ahistorical. And the complaint that its focus on merely verbal concerns often made its results trivial and irrelevant. The second generation of analytic philosophers like Robert Ennis and Harvey Siegel made substantial contributions to understanding issues of critical thinking, 
the forms of knowledge and philosophical problems in educational research. Let us summarize what we have discussed so far. Philosophy influences every aspect of education, namely the aim, content, method and discipline. It is philosophy which determines whether the aim of education should be intellectual, spiritual, liberal, aesthetic, moral or vocational. For example, the Hindu philosophy in ancient India resulted in the evolution of the Gurugula system of education. The militant philosophy of ancient Sparta gave rise to the regimental system of education. The Nazism of Germany gave rise to the fanatic anti-Jewish system of education. Philosophy influences the methodology also. Naturalistic philosophy emphasizes child-centered methods. Idealism emphasizes Socratic and lecture method. Pragmatism emphasizes the project method. In the case of curriculum, naturalists start with present experiences and interests of children. Idealists stress the study of religion, culture, ethics and literature. Pragmatists advocate the study of functional subjects which have utility value. Philosophy influences the discipline in education. Autocratic philosophy leads to repressions. Idealism leads to impressionism. Naturalism leads to emancipation. And modern pragmatism leads to free discipline. The educator must possess a sound philosophy of life. The educator must be a lover of wisdom then only they can bring about desirable changes in the future generations. Now you can try and answer the following questions. Education is a dynamic side of philosophy. Discuss. Discuss and elucidate. All educational questions are ultimately questions of philosophy. Discuss the relationship between philosophy and teaching and teaching styles. The scope of philosophy of education is unlimited. Critically evaluate this statement. Why is an understanding of educational philosophy essential for school teachers? Why should a teacher study philosophy of education? Hope that you may go through the reference book for further reading. Theory and Principles of Education by J.C. Agarwal, published in 1992 by Vigas Publishing House. Principles and Practices of Education by A.K. Chakrabarti in 2003 by Meerat Lal Book Depot. Foundations of Education by S. P. Chaube and A. Chaube in 1987, published by Vikas Publishing House. An Introduction to the Philosophy of Education by D. J. O'Connor in 1957, published by Ruth Lech Keegan Paul. An Introduction to Philosophical Analysis by John Hospers in 1953, published by Pritons Hall. Thank you for watching this program. We can meet again soon with another topic. Have a nice day.